What is Privacy Shield 2.0? While visiting Brussels on March 25th, U.S. President Joe Biden reached an agreement with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen on a new framework for transatlantic data privacy. The deal is being referred to as Privacy Shield 2.0, and it aims to re-establish a legal way for personal data to flow across the Atlantic. The agreement follows more than a year's talks between American and European negotiators. It also follows the EU Court of Justice's rejections of two previous transatlantic data transfer agreements, one in 2015 and the other in 2020. Why did the EU Court of Justice strike down these agreements? For answers, let's go back to 2013 and Edward Snowden's leak of information from the U.S. National Security Agency, or NSA. Snowden's files revealed a mass surveillance program called PRISM. It gave the NSA access to personal data on platforms such as Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Facebook. This alarmed Europeans, who worried how American intelligence authorities used their data. One Austrian privacy activist named Max Schrems decided to take matters into his own hands. Because Facebook participated in the PRISM program and its European headquarters are in Ireland, Schrems filed a complaint against the company with the Irish Data Protection Commissioner, or DPC. This Schrems case against Facebook is known as Schrems 1. He asked the DPC to suspend data transfers from Facebook Ireland to the company's servers in the US, since he was concerned that his EU data protection rights would be violated once his data reached the other side of the Atlantic. That's because European privacy laws forbid data transfers to non-EU countries, unless the company can guarantee adequate data protection. The PRISM program, Schrems claimed, made such a guarantee impossible. But the DPC rejected his complaint. It ruled that Facebook was fully compliant with EU data protection law, and that the data transfer framework that existed at the time provided adequate protection. Schrems appealed the DPC's decision before the Irish High Court, which approved a judicial review, and Schrems' case went to the EU Court of Justice in 2014. At the time Schrems filed his case, the original legal mechanism for transatlantic data transfer was in place. It was called the US-EU Safe Harbor Framework, and it had existed since 2000, when the European Commission decided it provided adequate data protection. But the Snowden revelations raised doubts about this decision, could American law and practices offer sufficient data protection when the U.S. government ran these surveillance programs? The EU Court of Justice believed it could not, and it ruled in 2015 that the European Commission decision was invalid. The ruling meant that the transfer of personal data from the EU to the U.S. was no longer allowed. As a result of Schrems 1, the US and the EU adopted another data transfer agreement in 2016, called the Privacy Shield. This agreement was in place for four years before Schrems filed another case, known as Schrems 2. Schrems won again, and in 2020, the EU Court of Justice struck down Privacy Shield because it did not offer the same protections as the EU's General Data Protection Regulation, which was adopted in 2018. The court found that U.S. surveillance programs go beyond what is necessary and proportional, and this violated EU law. The court also determined that EU citizens lacked proper judicial redress in the U.S. That meant that EU citizens could not hold American intelligence authorities accountable for unlawful electronic surveillance carried out for national security purposes. Biden and von der Leyen's new transatlantic data privacy framework agreement, the third of its kind, promises to implement new safeguards to ensure that U.S. intelligence activities are, quote, necessary and proportionate in the pursuit of defined national security objectives. It will also allow more ways for EU citizens to seek redress if they believe they are being unlawfully targeted by intelligence activities. A new legal mechanism will include an independent data protection review court made up of individuals from outside the U.S. government. They will have full authority to adjudicate claims and direct remedial measures as needed. This new arrangement will benefit EU citizens by offering them greater protection of their personal data. It will also renew a data transfer relationship worth 7.1 trillion U.S. dollars and benefit the 5,300 companies that previously relied on the Privacy Shield to conduct business. The next step is to translate this latest data transfer agreement into legal documents that both sides can adopt. 
President Biden will have to sign an executive order outlining new U.S. commitments to privacy. That will allow the European Commission to determine if the measures are adequate. During the process, some details will still need to be hashed out. These are likely to include the changes U.S. federal agencies will implement to give EU citizens greater control over their data, and the steps these agencies will take to ensure effective oversight of added privacy standards. For the latest on transatlantic data privacy legislation, sign up for Bertelsmann Foundation's tech newsletter, Hidden Layers, your quarterly transatlantic technology news covering big tech regulation, privacy policy, and artificial intelligence.